So in our class so far, our animation has involved what we would call object level animation. So, you know, we would have a planet and we would tell it to, you know, rotate, like just the whole object rotate around a certain axis or orbit around a certain point. Um, but it would be the whole thing moving. And so you would be keying just what we would call objects. But if you have... something that needs to deform all right if you have a, a rig um, you know a character with modeling on it this is not the best hand um, do not take this <laughs> as an example of a well-modeled hand um, but if you have something where they need to bend at the joints then technically you need component level animation right i need if i want to bend you know this finger at this knuckle then i need these vertices to move and these ones to stay still um, you can select a vertex all you want, but you cannot put keys on them. You cannot put keys directly on any component. Face, edge, uh, vertex, CV, EV, like, and none of those things can take a, um, a key directly, which means you can't have change, which means you can't have animation. Um, so we have to set up a rig. Um, and a rig is where you have basically other objects influencing the mesh. So this right here um, is the mesh. And then these joints here are part of the rig. There is also on this particular rig, although it's set up incorrectly, there is a curve. Um, and the way these work, and we're gonna kind of learn a little bit about rigging as we go through the semester um, with our various examples, but they can be set up, and this is not finished by any stretch, but they can be set up to influence the vertexes. So I rotate this joint and you can see that all these vertices rotate around. You can see that these don't move. These have to be told not to move as much. That's called painting weights. Um, but rigging, setting up a rig is all about setting up influence on your mesh. It's about determining how it moves and what moves it in what way. You know, you can have something to move the whole thing. You can have, because you're always going to need, right, a way to set up the whole thing, and then you need something to move it at all these various joints. Um, and there's a lot of engineering involved. There's a lot of math involved. Um, and so we're going to kind of slowly throughout the semester learn about these things. So I have here um, the first... <clears throat> formal rig we're going to be working with. And this is from uh, something online. And I will have a link to this page right near the video. And we are working with this one. Um, so the guy who made these has a whole bunch of stuff we're going to be using this semester. They're free to use for students. Don't go using them in your commercial work, should you have any, um, but for, for learning. Um, it is entirely appropriate. And um, so he's done us this favor of setting up some simple rigs um, that we can use to learn animation. So we don't, we can learn about rigging as we animate. Um, and I'm going to have a more under the hood video after this one, but I want to go briefly over what the heck a rig is and how it works and how this one specifically works. So first up, you see the mesh right here. Um, and in this case, I actually can't select it. That's on purpose. Um, they don't want you <clears throat> selecting the geometry uh, currently. They just want you selecting the controls. These are NURBS curves. Like if you were to go to create uh, curve tools. Oh, I'm lying actually. Um, NURBS primitives. So these are cylinders. Now a NURBS circle is the same as a CV curve. It's the same. <clears throat> These curve tools are making what would be NURBS things if you made them into full geometry. So circles and squares and things that people draw out as they like. Um, if you wanted to disappear them, you would say show NURBS curves and they all go away, right? So it's standard operating procedure for the controls to be NURBS curves. And it's because you can turn them off. It's because they're not geometry. They do not render. Um, and it's, it's just kind of become the industry standard. These are also <clears throat> color-coded for us, so they can kind of tell us 
what's going on. So um, this one we're going to do last. The middle one, when we click on it, it's got translates and rotates. And if I was to test it, it can do this. And it can do this. Right? It can rotate it and it can move it. And that's it. Um, and that's on purpose. They Any curve, anything you create in here. If I <clears throat> create nerves primitive circle, um, you'll see that there's a scale there. There's a visibility there. Right? There's other things there that this does not show in the channel box. Those things have been locked out. Those things have been uh, frozen and hidden from view because they're that they don't want you using that to scale this, right? There, there's other ways um, to do that. So, by the one of the reasons I like these rigs is that it does limit you. So we have this control here for general moving around, and then we have the top and bottom ones for the squash and stretch. Mm -hmm. And for any of you that took the 2D class with me, you'll remember that you had to manually maintain volume. Well, here they have done us a solid, right? This is the other reason you use the rig. Technically, you could use the scale tools on your planets to squash and stretch them, but like, do you want to? The answer is no, um, because it just is so hard. So this is using a whole bunch of geometry and math to say, you know, maintain volume as we squash and stretch things. Undo, there we go. Um, and you can use either side. So what happens is, is if this lands on the ground, you can use this side to squash it down this way where it hits the ground. And if it was to hit the ceiling, you could go in the opposite direction. If you wanted to squash on its side, well then you had better orient this a different way so that it's going to hit the wall. Like that. Um, let me put this back. So we have two controls for squashing, which only have translates on them. And I think we can, yeah, okay. So we can, we can, um, we could skew them as well. It doesn't have to be directly up and down. And you can see that they're all zeroed out. This is a properly set up rig, so you can get everything back to zero. We have one thing for generally moving it about. So that would be if you wanted it to bounce. Right, that would be the up and the down. And then this would be where you do the squash and then you would stretch it up and then you would move this. So you have to kind of switch back and forth between two controls in order to get all the animation. So if we can move this around and we can rotate it around, what the heck is this for? Well, what if I don't want it to start at the origin? What if I want it to start over here for whatever reason in my scene? Um, if I was to use this control to do that, well, it's no longer zeroed out, but then, oh, what if I mess something up and I need to get it back down on the ground and start it over again? Am I going to write these numbers down? No, it's ridiculous. So you use this for the layout. This is how you move it to start it. You should not, this main root joint, it's called the root. With rare exception, you really shouldn't be animating it. If you're doing like a general... Uh, previs kind of situation, then okay, yes, you're going to animate it. Um, but if you're talking about like a legit shot, this is for orienting. All right, I can put it in this direction and then use this like this. Um, this control will also have certain, uh, so it takes all these numbers, um, which means this will still read, well, if I put it back to where it was. There we go. It'll still read zero, zero. Um, also, this has a, a scale on it. So it's controlling how you can scale it. You'll notice it's not letting you do like an X, Y, and Z. It's saying, nope, nope, nope. This is the shape. You must stay there. Again, limits are helpful. Also in here, which is very cool, you can change what it looks like. So if you want to make it look like it's rotating, um, which we couldn't really see before, you'll probably want one of these patterns on it. So the root joint tends to be some global controls for layout, for orientation, global scale, setting up what it looks like. Um, and then 
your animation, like your keys, go onto these controls. This one's called main, this one's called top, this one's called bottom, like real simple. Um, and if you were to click through this, you would see every, everything is named. Um, I do believe most of the history has been deleted. You can't, there's no, there's no history listed here. So these are very clean rigs. Um, another reason I like to work with them. I don't even think, yeah, you can't even, there's not even going to be anything in the attribute editor. Um, so you would still use the, the channel box for animation. It's just a reduced amount of things that you can key. Um, and then the next video, I'm going to talk about sort of more of the under the hood stuff of the technical stuff.